In our previous episode detailing the tragic lives of the children of Hurin, we discussed Turin's final venture north to the land of his birth and Nienor's encounter with Glaurung. With Turin having found a new place for himself as a warrior among the men of Brethil, he believed that the dark shadow of his doom had been cast aside. Yet the coming of Nienor to the forests in which her brother now resided would serve to bring upon the children of Hurin their final end. Following the orcish ambush of Mablung and his companions, Nienor had fled so far that she reached the burial mound of Finduilus. In a brutal storm, a company of the men of Brethil, led by Tarambar, came upon her. While he initially believed her to be a wraith in the terrible conditions, Tarambar showed great kindness for the silent maiden, innately understanding that a terrible story lay behind her current malaise. She was then given the name Ninial, or Maid of Tears, and looked up and shook her head before repeating the name, which was the first word she had spoken since her encounter with Glaura. The next day, she was brought to the Ethelbrandir. However, she fell under a severe fever on the journey, which required Brandir to utilize all his healing skills. She would sleep peacefully only when Tarambar sat by her side. In the period after her sickness, she was required to learn the art of speaking again, and she took to this with great intelligence and continued joy at her progress. At this time, Brandir fell madly in love with Ninial, but she viewed him as a brother, and it was to Tarambar that her heart was given, as they remained unaware that they were siblings. When she came to full health once more, much to the chagrin of Brandir, Tarambar asked for Ninial's hand in marriage, with the leader of the men of Brethil counselling against the union due to the shadow which lay upon Tarambar. When Brandir revealed who Tarambar was and the fate of Nagathrond, Ninial hesitated, though when the spring came she agreed to marry him, and in the midsummer they were wed. Their joy was not to last, as Morgoth, tired of the defiance of the men of Brethil, tasked Glaurung with bringing fire and death to the forests where they made their home. This left Tarambar in a dire predicament, as he remained uncertain whether his intervention would aid the stricken men of Brethil or bring his doom to bear upon them. Initially, he did not ride out to face the orcs, as Ethel Brandir was not threatened. However, Dorlas and his warriors suffered in the early confrontations in the absence of their finest warrior. Dorlas returned from one such skirmish and showed his wounds to his friend, and Tarambar took up the black sword Girthang once more and drew to him a force of hundreds of woodsmen. With Tarambar at their head, they massacred the orcs and hung their bodies from the trees at the crossing of Tiglin. A second host was ambushed. Surprised by the wielder of Girthang and the numbers of the woodsmen, they were annihilated, with only a tiny remnant returning with ill tidings to Nagathrond. Spring came, and with it, the conception of Tarambar and Ninial's first child. However, once more, joy was to be stripped from them. News reached Ethel Brandir of the coming of Glaura, who had begun to burn the forest down to draw out his great foe Tarambar. His progress was brutal in its efficiency, and before long, Glaurung had reached the Tiglin, which gave Tarambar an idea to slay the great beast. Taking with him Dorlas and a relative of Brandir, Hunthor, as the only men brave enough to face the dragon, Tarambar set out despite the protests of Ninial, and before long they came to the Nengirith. Here, Tarambar revealed his plan. Gauging Glaurung's current path, he believed that Glaurung would have to pass over a gorge known as the Kabet Enaras due to its great size. Despite the misgivings of Dorlas as to the location upon which they wished to strike, the trio moved at dusk to face one of the mightiest of all Morgoth's servants. In the meantime, Ninial, fearing for her husband and ignoring the counsel of Brandir, set out with a company of other concerned women to attain tidings of the encounter with the dragon. The lame Brandir, upon his crutch, followed in pursuit, well aware that the curse of Morgoth would bring nothing but despair to his beloved and hoping he could potentially avert such a disaster. Tarambar and his companions soon came to Kabed and Aras, and the incredible noise of the river Tiglin disguised their movements such that even the keen ears of Glaurung could not pick them out. 
During the initial phase of the climb towards a position that would give them the best chance of felling Glaurung, Dorlas's courage failed, leaving Tarambar and Hunthor to complete their task. As they continued their crossing, the reek of the dragon was as such to make the two men dizzy, causing them to slip, only barely clinging to the tree stems. At the top, they waited for Glaurung to arrive and lodge himself in a favourable position during his crossing. Even the dragon's movement was brutal and violent, and had the duo been any closer, the burst of flame he let out would have slain them, yet they survived and quickly began to clamber along the cliffside to reach the dragon. The ever-fearless Tarambar hastened towards his foe, and in the process slipped, only to be saved by Hunthor. As he began to thank his companion, a great rock fell upon his head and his corpse tumbled into the Tiglin. Tarambal ruled the curse which lay upon him and had slain such a brave man, yet he steeled himself for what lay ahead. Drawing to him all his courage and hatred for the dragon, Tarambal was imbued with great strength and swiftly moved to the optimal point. He did so just in time for the dragon's underbelly to drop downwards into the gorge as he dragged his great weight across it. Turin then drew his sword and thrust it to the hilt into Glaurung's gut. The scream Glaurung let out shook the entire forest, and the thrashing which accompanied his final moments threw Tarambar loose. And if not for his strength of will, he would have also been slain. Tarambar once more braved the crossing, made his way to his dying foe, and looked upon him devoid of pity. He then walked forward and spoke freely of his hatred for the dragon, before drawing Gurthang from his gut. With this, a spurt of black blood shot forth, severely burning his arm. The cries he let out then caused the dragon to stir, and when Glaurung made eye contact, it was with such incomparable malice that Tarambar felt he had been struck by an arrow and fell as one who had died. Ninial soon came upon the scene, with Brandia following her far behind and went straight to her beloved despite her fear of the stricken dragon. His appearance left little doubt in her mind as to his fate, and despite hearing a faint breath, she believed that Tarambar now lay dead, and so she began to cry and weep. Brandia arrived at the scene too late, as the cries of Ninial had roused the dying dragon, and with his dying words, he revealed her true identity. The dragon's death removed the spell he had cast upon her, and as a stunned Brandir watched on, Ninial bade her brother farewell, now realizing the truth of their incestuous union. Farewell, O twice beloved, a Turin Taramba Turin Ambatanan, master of doom by doom mastered, O happy to be dead. She then began to run, despite the cries of Brandir, and made her way to the Kabed and Aras, and here she cast herself into the Tiglin and died with an all consuming grief in her heart. The gorge would be renamed the Kabej Na'eramath, or the Leap of Dreadful Doom. However, this was not the end of that day's woes. Brandir returned to his people, and on the journey he came upon Dolas, who was still ashamed of his failure to follow Turin through the gorge. Brandir acknowledged his cowardice, berating his lesser, and as a result enraged the warrior, who, as he looked set to strike the leader of his people, was struck down with the short sword of Brandir. Disgusted by the bloodshed, Brandir dropped the blood-soaked blade to the forest floor and continued back to his people. Once more amongst their company, he would bring the ill news of the day to them, before stating that the forest would no longer be known as Brethil, but rather Sach Nierchin Hurin, or the Grave of the Children of Hurin. Unbeknownst to them, Turin yet lived, and with the death of Glaurung, he had begun to stir as the dragon's power faded. Weary beyond all measure, he was forced to use Gurthang as a crutch and came to the Nengirith, where he met those who were readying to collect his corpse. Brandir then told Turin of the death of his beloved, and although he would not believe it at first, his anger at Brandir and accusations that he now lied drove the latter to reveal Ninial's true identity. Then a great rage overtook Turin and he drew Gurthang from its sheath. Brandir, unarmed as he was, did not allow fear to overtake him and didn't flee, allowing the black sword to kill him. Those who witnessed the slaying fled from Turin in fear, and he was left alone, 
causing him to wander mad with grief through the forest, trying to convince himself that his sister still resided within Doriath. This illusion came crashing down around Turin as twelve elvish huntsmen with Mablung at their head came across the weariest of warriors within Beleriand. The tidings that Morwen and Nienor had left the girdle in search of Turin shattered what strands of willpower remained to him, and in his grief he cursed Doriath before fleeing from the huntsmen. Mablung ordered that they follow him, but Turin outran his pursuers with ease and came to the Cabet Naeramath. Here he was unwilling to sully the waters in which his sister now lay, and instead drew Girthang one final time. He said to his blade, Hail, Girthang, Iron of Death, thou alone now remainst. But what lord or loyalty dost thou know, save the hand that wieldeth thee? From no blood wilt thou shrink? Wilt thou take Turin to Rambar? Wilt thou slay me swiftly? And the blade responded, Yea, I will drink thy blood, that may I forget the blood of Beleg, my master, and the blood of Brandir slain unjustly. I will slay thee swiftly. Turin placed the hilt on the ground and cast himself upon the black sword, ending his life. Too late did Mablung come upon his friend, and when the men of Brethil came down from the Nen Girith, they told him of what occurred. In their sadness, the Edain began to weep, and Mablung, having learned of his great failure and thinking back to the sacrifice of Hurin at the Battle of Unnumbered Tears, placed an all-encompassing weight of guilt upon himself. The dragon's remains were burnt in a great pyre, and Turin's body was placed upon the shoulders of his companions and burned within a high mound, with the shards of Girthang beside him. A great grey headstone was brought some time after, and upon it were carved in the ruins of Doriath the names Turin Tarambar Dagnir Glaurunga and Nienor Niniel. Having learned of the death of his children, Morgoth finally released Hurin from his bondage, and in his wandering, he came to the forest of Brethil. Coming to the Cabet Naeramath, Hurin would not look upon the great stone, for he knew what was carved upon it even then. He had also noticed that he was not alone, for a fellow aged wanderer sat in the shadow of the headstone. Even when they drew back their hood and revealed a beaten down visage, Hurin did not recognize the wanderer. However, the instant they locked eyes, he knew her to be his wife, Morwen Elithen who informed him that she too was now spent and would pass with the setting of the sun. Hurin did not respond and instead sat beside the stone with Morwen in his arms and as the sun went down, she sighed and clasped his hand. Then she was still and Hurin knew she had passed, leaving him alone and broken beneath the shade of the headstone of his children. Our chronicler concludes this story with these words. Here ends the tale of the children of Hurin, longest of all the lays of Beleriand. The concluding documentaries on the history of the First Age will focus on the fall of Gondolin and the War of Wrath. We plan to cover the battles of many other fantasy, sci-fi and space opera universes. So make sure you have subscribed and pressed the bell button. Please consider liking and sharing as it helps immensely and don't forget to comment. We'll try to read and respond to every comment, as we want to know what you think about this video and which videos you hope to see in the future. This is the Wizards and Warriors channel, and we'll catch you on the next one.